With the multiplayer ready gameplay tags component, you can easily manage tags per actor. For example, in this case, each of the three colored panels uses its own gameplay tags component and changes color based on active tags through simple tag listeners. In another example, the component drives an entire attribute system, including the character's status and behavior, by reacting to tag changes in real time. This attribute and ability system is part of my MSG course, where I guide you step by step, whether you're a beginner or more advanced, through building a complete game from scratch to finish. You'll find more details in the video description below. Let's get started with building the component. I'll be using video segments from my MSG course to demonstrate how the gameplay tags component is built. That's not an issue, since this component is designed to function independently and can be used in isolation. Once the component is fully implemented, we'll include a practical example at the end to show how it can be used in context. As you can see, I've already navigated to the Blueprints, System, Ability System, Components folder. Don't be confused by this. In the course, this component is part of the custom-built Ability System, which is designed to function similarly to GAS. That's why we're placing it in this location. So let's go. Inside the Components folder, create a new actor component and name it BPC underscore gameplay tags. Once the component is created, open it up and disable the start with tick enabled option. We won't need ticking for this system. Then remove all default nodes from the graph to start with a clean setup. We begin by adding a new custom event named set gameplay tags. This function is used to apply a new set of gameplay tags to the component, allowing us to add or remove tags as needed in a controlled and consistent way. Add an input pin named tags and set its type to gameplay tag container. A gameplay tag container allows us to store and process multiple tags at once, not just a single tag. This is ideal when you want to assign or manage a group of tags in one operation, which keeps the logic clean and efficient especially when dealing with complex gameplay states or effects. Add another input named enabled, of type boolean. This input will let us decide whether the past and tags should be added or removed. With this event, we'll be able to assign or remove multiple gameplay tags at once, all through a single, streamlined interface. And this function is not replicated. That's important. We want full control over when and where this event runs whether the tags are applied locally for prediction purposes or explicitly on the server for authoritative changes. This gives us the flexibility to manage tag state transitions cleanly and safely across client and server, and to override or validate predicted changes when the final server state comes in. To set the tags, we need a new function named update tag state. This function acts as the internal handler for applying or removing tag groups. Instead of doing this logic inside the event directly, move it to the gameplay tags component category and set it to private. Here we add two input pins, just like in the event. The first is named tags, of type gameplay tag container. The second one is named enabled, of type boolean. Both inputs mirror the ones from the set gameplay tags event, defining what tags to change and whether to add or remove them. Right click in the graph and get the gameplay tags variable. Then call break gameplay tag container on it. We pull the gameplay tags variable into the graph to keep things readable and accessible. By breaking it, we expose the internal array, which makes it easier to work with individual tags. The break node lets us access each tag stored in the container. This is essential if we want to iterate through all entries and process them one by one. Then call a for each loop on the tag array output. This allows us to go through each tag in the container and decide how to handle it. Connect the function's execution pin to the for each loop input. Inside the loop body, add a branch node. Use the enabled input as the condition. This determines if we want to add or remove the tag. It splits the logic cleanly based on intention. On the true pin of the branch, add another branch. This second check is used to verify whether the tag already exists in our current tag list. That way, we avoid unnecessary duplicates and only apply what's missing. Now to build the condition for this check, create a new variable named active tags of type gameplay tag container. This variable stores all currently active tags on the actor and acts as our internal authority for what's currently applied. 
set the variable to private and move it into the gameplay tags component category. Then set its replication to rep notify. With rep notify, any changes to this tag container will automatically sync to clients. That keeps our logic clean and also allows the client to respond immediately when tags are added or removed without needing custom replication logic for every tag change. Drag the active tags variable into the graph as a get node and call has tag on it. The has tag function checks whether a specific tag already exists inside the container. Now select both nodes, right click on the has tag node and choose collapse to function. Name the new function has active tag. This makes our logic reusable and easier to maintain. We encapsulate the tag existence check into a dedicated utility function. Move this new function to the gameplay tags component category and mark it as pure. Add an input named tag of type gameplay tag. This input defines which tag we want to check against the current active list. Add an output named result of type boolean. The output will return true if the tag exists in the active list and false otherwise. Open the new has active tag function and organize the nodes. Connect the function's tag input pin to the tag input of the has tag node. This ensures we are checking the exact tag passed into the function. Set exact match to true. By enabling exact match, we make sure that only the specified tag is matched without considering parent or child tags in the hierarchy. That's important when precise control over state conditions is required. Finally, connect the return value of the has tag node to the result pin of the return node. Add the following comment to the function. Checks if the provided tag exists in the list of currently active tags. Uses exact match to ensure the tag must be present without partial hierarchy inclusion. Back in the update tag state function, Connect the array element pin from the for each loop. This is the tag we want to process to the tag input of the has active tag function. Connect the result output to the second branch node. This branch checks whether the tag already exists in the active list. If not, we'll go ahead and add it. Drag in the active tags variable and call add gameplay tag on it. The add gameplay tag node adds the specified tag to the container if it isn't already present. It does not allow duplicates and only adds valid entries. We still need to make one important check at this point, even though adding a tag that already exists will be silently ignored by the add gameplay tag node. That check is intentional, because later on, we'll trigger a notify from this function whenever a tag is added or removed. And without this condition, we might fire that notify even when nothing actually changed. So by checking if the tag is already present before trying to add it, We make sure the logic only reacts to real changes, not duplicates. Connect the false exec pin of the branch to the add gameplay tag node. This ensures that we only add the tag if it hasn't been added yet. Also connect the array element pin to the tag input of the add node. This defines which tag should be added to the list of active tags. Now for the removal path. On the false pin of the first branch that checks the enabled input, add another branch. Connect the result of the has active tag function to the condition input. This makes sure we only try to remove tags that are actually present in the list. Then call remove gameplay tag on the active tags variable. The remove gameplay tag node cleanly removes the specified tag from the container. If the tag doesn't exist, nothing happens. This keeps the operation safe and predictable. Connect the true exec pin of the second branch to the remove node and again plug the array element into the tag input. At the top of the function, add this comment. Adds or removes the tags based on the enabled value, prevents duplicates, and notifies listeners via process tag diff and notify. We'll create the listener function later to respond to tag changes reactively. Compile and save once, then return to the event graph. Here, you can now call the update tag state function from within the set gameplay tags event. Connect the tags input to tags and the enabled input to enabled. This passes the data from the event into our internal logic, ensuring consistent behavior across the entire component. Next, add a new custom event and name it set gameplay tag. Then call the update tag state function directly from this event.
This gives us a quick way to set or clear a single tag without needing to build a container manually. It's useful for simpler cases like flagging a temporary status or toggling isolated states. Add an input named tag, of type gameplay tag. This defines which specific tag we want to apply or remove. Add a second input named enabled, of type boolean. Now, on the tag pin, call the make gameplay tag container from tag node. This node takes a single tag and wraps it into a container so we can feed it into the existing logic. Since the update tag state function expects a container, this keeps our setup consistent across all entry points. Connect the return value to the tag's input of update tag state, and connect enabled to the enabled input. This ties the new event directly into our existing logic, without duplicating any of the tag handling. Now add a comment to this both events. Set gameplay tag states. With this, we've completed the functional foundation of the component. Now select the update tag state function and move it back into the default category. Since it serves as core internal logic and is used across the system, it doesn't need to be isolated in its own category. Next, we need one final utility function. Name it has active tags. This function lets us check whether the actor currently has a specific tag, or a group of tags, active. We'll use it often in condition checks, ability requirements, or tag-based visual feedback. Move the function to the gameplay tags component category. Add an input named tags, of type gameplay tag container. This input defines the tags we want to compare against the currently active list. Add another input named all tags, of type boolean. This flag determines how strict the check should be. If true, all tags must be present. If false, having at least one tag is enough. Now, add a branch node and use all tags as the condition. This determines which kind of tag check we want to perform. All tags must match, or just one is enough. From the active tags variable, call has all tags. This node checks whether all tags from the provided container exist in the target container. In our case, we check if all input tags are already present in the active tag list. Connect the tag's input to the other container pin, and set exact match to true. Exact match ensures that the check only succeeds if the exact tag is present, no partial or hierarchical matches are allowed. From the true exec pin of the branch, call a return node. Drag off the return value pin from has all tags and connect it to the return node. This will auto-create an output pin. Rename it to result and set its type to boolean. Now for the false branch. From active tags, call has any tags. This node checks if at least one of the input tags is found in the active list. It's the counterpart to has all tags and is more permissive, returning true even if only one tag matches. Connect the tags input to the other container pin, and again enable exact match. From the false exec pin of the first branch, call another return node. Connect the return value from has any tags to the result output pin. This gives us a flexible utility. We can use one function for both strict and relaxed checks, controlled via the all tags input. Add the following comment to the function. Returns true if the specified tag or any tag from the input container exists in the list of active tags. Use the all tags input to require all tags to be present instead of just one. Compile and save everything, and with that, we're done with the core setup for now. Next, we'll put the component to the test. Open up BP My Player State. We'll manage our gameplay tags inside the player state. The player state exists on both the server and every client, and more importantly, it stays alive even if the player's character gets destroyed. That means tag-related data doesn't get lost during events like respawning. For example, if a tag was added by a crafting system or marks a global gameplay state that should persist across characters, we don't want it to reset just because the player is currently unpossessed. By keeping the tags in the player state, they remain intact until we explicitly remove them. Now add the BPC underscore gameplay tags component and name it gameplay tags comp. This keeps the system structured. All logic related to tag processing is handled inside the component, and since it's part of the player state, the character itself doesn't have to worry about tag logic or replication. Select the component and activate component replicates. Without this flag, the tag container and its changes wouldn't replicate to other clients. 
so this is required to keep the data synchronized across the network. To test this setup, we'll assign a few tags from the server when the match begins. In begin play, call switch has authority to make sure we're running on the server. Then call set gameplay tags on the gameplay tags comp. This triggers the logic to apply a group of tags, and since it's executed on the server, the replication will push the result to all connected clients. Connect the authority execution pin to the set gameplay tags node. Click on the tags input pin to open the gameplay tag selector. This drop down lists all tags currently registered in the project. Tags are organized hierarchically, similar to folder trees. This structure helps you group and categorize gameplay tags logically, making them easier to manage and more intuitive to check during runtime. For our test, select the tags test, state tree, tag 1, and tag 2. Set enabled to true, since we want to apply them. Compile and save everything, then hit play. When the game starts, we won't see anything in the viewport, and that's expected. Press Shift plus F1 to release the mouse and interact with the editor while the game is running. Now select the BPC underscore gameplay tags component. In the details panel, you'll see a drop down at the top labeled no debug object selected. This lets you choose which instance of the component you want to inspect, the one on the server or on the client. First select the server instance. Then hover over the active tags variable and expand it. You'll see that the tags tag 1 and tag 2 are listed, confirming that the tags were applied correctly on the server. Now switch to the client instance of the same component. Expand the active tags variable again, and you'll see that the same two tags, tag 1 and tag 2, were replicated successfully to the client. This confirms our setup is working. The component handles server-side authority correctly, and the replicated tag state is properly synchronized across the network. Stop the play mode and head back to the player state. Let's now test how tag removal works. Right after setting the tags, call the set gameplay tag function on the gameplay tags comp. Click on the tag input and pick test. State tree. Tag 1 from the list. Since this function is meant for handling a single tag, the selector now limits us to just one, which is exactly what we want here. Leave enabled set to false because we're testing how to remove the tag. Compile and save everything, then hit play. Once the game is running, press Shift plus F1 to release the mouse and open up the gameplay tags component. By default, the debug object is already set to the client instance. Now, if we take a look at the active tags, we'll see that only tag 2 is still active, and tag 1 has been removed successfully. Let's double check the same on the server side. Switch over to the server instance of the component, and yep, just like expected, tag 1 is gone and only tag 2 remains. So, with that, the basic setup of our gameplay tags component is complete. In the next lecture, we'll continue building on this foundation. See you there.